FSR 2.0 is here. It's a big deal and you should be very excited. And I'm going to show you why. Oh, hello there. Tech Dweeb here. <laughs> How you doing? You know, I strongly believe that the new frontier of gaming graphics and performance will be upscaling tech. Running games at lower resolutions and making them look like they're running at higher resolutions, that's how we'll be able to squeeze out the most beautiful graphical fidelity out of our hardware. And there's a new contender in the graphical upscaling battle, FSR 2.0, which was just released. And it's open source, so any developer can add it to their games, and yeah, it can run on any GPU. The initial implementation of FSR 1.0 has been a godsend to low-spec and budget gamers since it was released last year, giving modest GPUs the ability to run their games at lower resolutions and then upscale them to higher resolutions with some intelligent sharpening algorithms to make them sharper and clearer. It works uh, pretty good, but FSR 1.0 can't hold a candle to DLSS, which is a much more powerful and accurate hardware-based upscaling technology. But of course, DLSS only works if you have a 20 or 30 series NVIDIA RTX GPU. So gamers with AMD GPUs and older NVIDIA GPUs are left with FSR. And while, yeah, we're not getting the best upscaling fidelity with FSR 1.0, it's still pretty good. And in situations where you're running like 4K, for instance, you can barely notice the FSR upscaling at a resolution that high. And you'll definitely notice the huge performance boost. But wouldn't it be nice if we could get DLSS quality upscaling without the dedicated machine learning hardware? Well, that's what AMD is up against with FSR 2.0, and that's what we're going to test today. Real quick, FSR 2.0 is different than FSR 1.0 in one significant way. FSR 1.0 is spatial upscaling, which means that the upscaling software takes each frame as an individual image, scales it up, and applies the sharpening algorithm. The big difference with FSR 2.0 is that it has implemented temporal upscaling, which means that not only does it use spatial data from individual frames, it also uses data from multiple frames, like frames of the past, and it can use this to calculate the motion of entities in a scene, and it can use that to make much more accurate predictions about how the scene is supposed to look. FSR 1.0 is spatial upscaling, DLSS is hardware-based temporal upscaling, and now FSR 2.0 is AMD's software version of temporal upscaling. So let's see how it does, shall we? The only game that currently has FSR 2.0 implemented is Deathloop, although there will be many more to come very soon, I'm sure. This is the perfect game to test our upscaling because it supports FSR 1.0, FSR 2.0, and DLSS. I'm going to do all these tests at, at 1080p, just so the actual pixel data is nice and clear. But obviously, upscaling is great for getting the most out of your hardware on 1440p or, or 4K displays. We'll compare both image quality in a few different scenes, and we'll look at how the different upscales affect the FPS in a few different scenes. All the scenes will be running at 1080p, maxed out ultra settings, with ray tracing enabled. I'm running this on my main rig, running a Ryzen 7 5800X, RTX 3080, 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz DDDDR4 RAM and PCIe Gen 4 and VME SSD. Full specs listed in the description below. So how's about we give it a test and see what all this FSR 2.0 hype really is all about, shall we? You're gonna need a keen eye here, so look closely and pay attention. I'm gonna be switching these different upscaling methods and resolutions on the screen. So we're gonna start off with this little intro scene here at 1080p as our baseline. This should be the gold standard for how things should look when upscaled. Take a close look at this area over here and notice how the, the grass looks at the bottom there and those diagonal bar things on the right. At native 1080p, we're getting 167 FPS. By the way, we're, we're going to be doing a balanced upscaling on FSR and DLSS. Now we'll switch to good old FSR 1.0, running in balanced mode, like I said. This doesn't look great. You know, the detail of the grass is all chunky looking, and you can definitely see some jaggy edges around the, on the diagonals. We go from 167 FPS up to 216 FPS. So that's a pretty big boost, but it's definitely not going to fool anyone into thinking you're running the game at native 1080p. So let's see FSR 2.0. Once again, here's 1080p native, and now FSR 2.0, running with the balance preset and we get 203 FPS. This is actually uh, amazing. Can you even tell that this isn't native 1080p? That the f fidelity on FSR 2.0 is miles ahead of FSR 1.0. Look how crisp and clear the grass is. 
and those diagonal lines along the bars. There's just so much detail in the scene. I, I have a hard time finding any area that's a giveaway that this is actually upscaled from 900p. This is crazy. We don't get quite as high of a frame rate boost, only 203 FPS instead of the 216 FPS from FSR 1.0. Just look at the difference in quality between the old and the new FSR implementation. But I would be remiss if I didn't show you DLSS for comparison. DLSS also looks amazing here. I can, I can see tons of detail in the grass and the, the diagonals along the bars are nice and smooth. And we're getting 209 FPS here. Comparing the two, uh, on the left we have FSR 2.0 and on the right we have DLSS. I notice very little difference between them. DLSS gets a slightly higher FPS at 209 compared to 203 of FSR 2.0, but as far as the actual quality of the image goes, yeah, they're, they're pretty much identical. And considering that DLSS quality upscaling has only been available for individuals who have been lucky enough to get their hands on a 20 or 30 series RTX GPU, the fact that FSR 2.0 is coming to the masses that'll work on any GPU, and it's basically as good if not better than 1080p, that, that's pretty darn cool. I'll show you another scene here. This is native 1080p, getting 170 FPS. Look closely at the detail around the desk drawers and the boxes beside the map and the grates on the lockers in this comparison. Old FSR 1.0, which boosts us up to 230 FPS. But we're definitely getting some serious jaggy edges happening. FSR 2.0 looks, well, uh, it looks freaking amazing. Would you, would you even be able to tell this isn't native 1080p? Native 1080p gave us 170 FPS, but with FSR 2.0 on balance, we go up to 213 FPS. A and again, here's the same scene with DLSS. We're up to 220 FPS with DLSS, so the performance is a tiny bit better, but the actual quality of the scene is, is pretty much the same as FSR 2.0. Actually, I'd say that FSR 2.0 is, is a tiny bit better than DLSS. You probably can't tell on the YouTube video, but F the FSR 2.0 is a little bit sharper. It's pulling out a little more detail in some of the finer areas, like the circular vent on the wall behind those boxes. Can you see the difference? And you know what? I think FSR 2.0 looks better than native 1080p. We get a sharper, better looking image and an FPS boost. Okay, here's one more still seen comparison. For some reason, the FPS in this section stayed at around 90 FPS, no matter what I did with the resolution or upscaling. I think that in uh, open world areas of this game were more CPU limited. So that might be the reason for that. I don't really understand why, to be honest. Uh, in this scene, I want you to look closely at the neon sign that says expand your mind to the left of the crosshair there. At native 1080p, it's not super clear. It's a little bit jittery as the first person camera naturally bobs and it sways ever so slightly. FSR 1.0 looks pretty terrible. <laughs> uh, see how flickery the details on the side are? It's jumping around like crazy. Lots of the edges of objects are doing this in, in this scene. It does sharpen some details, but not much to be honest. And pretty much all the diagonals in the scene have jaggy edges, so you know, th th this isn't very impressive. FSR 2.0 is a huge improvement. Look, you can actually read the side. It's a, a tiny bit flickery, just a little bit. You can see there in some of the letters. So, you know, it's not perfect, but it's nearly there. And the rest of the scene is super crisp. Again, would you even be able to tell that this is a native 1080p? Because I couldn't. DLSS is the clear winner here. Look how crisp and clear that side is. That's because games that implement DLSS have to pre-render areas of the game to create profiles for the machine learning algorithm to have something to work from. So DLSS knows what things are supposed to look like. However, sometimes it overcompensates. This side is a good example. It's crisper and clearer, but it's way brighter than the original. I've seen this before in many games. DLSS, you know, it's, it's a great upscaler, but sometimes it, it takes liberties from the image and it just ends up looking different than the original. I suppose I'll give the win to DLSS because FSR 2.0 has a bit of an unrealistic flicker to it, but I'd say that FSR 2.0 is truer to the original and is better looking overall. Oh, okay. Hold on a sec here, guys. <laughs> My cat's on my keyboard. Hermione, you know you're not allowed up here. I'm making a video. Oh, you want a treat? You want a treat? Okay, come on, you. Let's get you a treat. 
Here's a quick uh, comparison in the different FSR 2.0 quality settings. First, we have performance, which renders the game at 50% of the output resolution. Look uh, closely at the center area of the screen. Those power lines, the details in the dirt, and the bushes. Here's the balanced preset, which is 59% output resolution. As expected, things look a bit sharper. You know, you can see more detail in those power lines and the bushes on the ground. And here's the quality preset. This is upscaled from, I think, 70% or so. Uh, much better looking, much sharper and crisper, uh, as expected. <laughs> you can actually make out the entire power line and see the little leaves in the bush. Again, the FPS here didn't really change for some reason. I don't have an explanation for that, so, you know, we're gonna need more games with FSR 2.0 implemented to be able to really tell how the performance changes across the different presets. Here's all three side by side, so you can see the difference all at once. The difference is pretty dramatic, in my opinion. Uh, quality pulls out a lot more detail in the fine areas, but even in, on performance, the game looks really, really good. And in motion, you notice even less of the detail loss in the fine areas. And finally, let's compare all of our options in motion. This won't be super easy to tell apart because we're not pausing and looking at individual objects, but this should give you an idea of what each different scaling method feels like. So starting off with 1080p native, that's what we're seeing right now. And here's FSR 1.0. In, in still images, FSR 1.0 doesn't look much better, but in motion, when you're actually playing the game, it definitely looks better, in my opinion. The added sharpness makes it feel like a higher resolution. You can absolutely tell that you're not running at native 1080p on the balanced preset at least, but it's pretty good. I'd rather play like this than play at native 1080p with much less performance. In motion, FSR 2.0 really shines. It really does feel like native 1080p. Again, FSR 2.0 uses temporal upscaling, which takes multiple frame data into its calculations, so it makes sense that things in motion are, are sharp and clear. And actually, comparing it with 1080p native, I think FSR 2 feels better. It's a bit more crisp, a little bit sharper. It's actually kind of crazy to think that an upscaled version of a lower resolution looks like it has more detail than the native resolution. And here is DLSS. You know, this feels great, about the same as 1080p, maybe a little better, but compared to FSR 2.0, well, this feels pretty much identical. It's like the same as FSR 2.0. I mean, unless you, you stop and really look closely at individual objects like that neon side, you can't really tell them apart. Here's FSR 2.0 versus DLSS. Can you tell which is which? Wh which do you prefer? Which looks sharper? Which has more detail? Go ahead and pause the video if you want to compare still images. I prefer the one on the left personally. You know, it feels a, a little sharper. Can you tell which requires expensive RTX hardware and which is just a simple software-based temporal upscaling algorithm? Well, the one on the left is our new FSR 2.0. Did you pick that one? Or the DLSS on the right? Regardless of which one you picked, I think it's fair to say that both of these look and feel like they're not upscaled images. They look and feel like they're running on native 1080p. Both of these offer a sizable performance improvement over 1080p. The, the difference between them is that one requires an expensive RTX GPU, and the other one doesn't. And that's freaking awesome. Because that means that FSR 2.0, which doesn't need dedicated machine learning hardware, can, can do just as well on any GPU. DLSS quality upscaling was previously only for those lucky enough to own a 20 or 30 series RTX GPU. And now mere mortals with our AMD GPUs, or older NVIDIA GPUs, or even like integrated graphics, can get some seriously impressive temporal upscaling without paying the RTX tax. I'm really looking forward to the time when most games offer support for FSR 2.0. Right now, Death is, Deathloop is the only one, but there will be others coming soon. Like I said, this is open source software, so any game can implement it. So I don't doubt that many, many games will be adding the option. It's an exciting time to be a PC gamer, I'll tell you that much. The only game currently that has FSR 2.0 implemented is Deathloop. I bought this game on Steam just to test out FSR 2.0 and make this video for you guys. <laughs> no need to thank me, but if you insist on thanking me, then uh, yeah, I guess you could check out my Patreon page, linked below. You'll make it into the credits at the end of the videos, and there are some other fun perks you might be interested in. <laughs> Deathloops, uh, this seems fun, you know? I had no idea about this game going into this. I didn't watch any reviews or anything, but it seems like a good game. It, it seems up my alley. I I'm getting some serious Dishonored vibes, <laughs> which is a series that I did like. Deathloop is basically Dishonored 3. It's made by Bethesda, so that makes sense. I'm kind of glad I didn't know anything going into this because the game itself is kind of weird and mysterious. Lots to discover and find out about. So I guess maybe this was really just the kick in the buns I needed to check it out. So there you have it. FSR 2.0 is really freaking impressive. And you should be very excited 
about this technology because it's changing fast and it lets us get way more performance out of our hardware, allowing us to run games at lower resolutions upscaled with a resulting experience that's on par with or better than running the games at their native resolutions. But what do you guys think? Have you been using FSR 1.0 in your games and doing just fine? Do you think FSR 2.0 is as big a deal as I think it is? Are you a DLSS fanboy and think this whole FSR 2.0 thing is way overblown? Are you a cat that likes bananas? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Subscribe if you haven't already. As always, I'm TechTweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye